There are plenty of people who are still working in their late 60s, their 70s, like older ages. And it's not because they want to, it's because they have to. So if you start preparing right now while you're in your 20s, the best thing that is working for you right now is time. Get your water and give you some wine. I should have had some wine. With exposure, execution, and consistency, there is nothing you can't do. Just keep planting. Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode on the Responsible Homegirl podcast. I am Kiani, the Responsible Homegirl, period. Um, this is a space for young adults to become financially responsible and wealth conscious. Now, like I always tell y'all, the way that we do that is by sharing great financial education and interviewing entrepreneurs who are building their wealth through business. I hope you enjoyed last week's episode, or not even last week's episode, last Wednesday's, I say last Wednesday's, this past Wednesday episode, um, the first episode on the Think Like a Mobile series, which is where I will be interviewing entrepreneurs who are from South Carolina or who live in South Carolina, really exposing the greatness in our own backyard. But today, we're going to be talking about some dope financial education, specifically why all 20-somethings need a Roth IRA, period. So get your pen, get your pad, get everything that you need because when I tell you this is going to be filled with gems, it is going to be filled with gems, okay? But before we get into today's episode, y'all know each and every year, people are always saying, next year, I'm going to get my money together. I'm going to save X amount of dollars. I'm going to do this. But they don't do it. Crazy, right? So what I want to do is hold your hand. I want to walk with you. I want to really help you build that solid financial foundation. And all of that starts with budgeting. You cannot start investing. You cannot start doing all of these fancy things that you want to do in your personal finances unless you know how to manage your money. And that's all that budgeting is, is managing your money. So I host one-on-one -on -one sessions where I walk people through every single thing to get from point A to point B and really get that clarity that you need to take your finances to the next level. So if you have tried so many things by yourself and it just isn't working, it is okay. We are never like taught a thing about money or personal finances in school. So that is why the Responsible Home Girl exists to walk you through everything step by step. So if I am talking to you because I know I am talking to someone who's like, oh, I really need this help or I really want to do this. And you're not playing around. You super serious. Make sure you schedule your one-on-one -on -one budgeting session with me today. And we're going to get this thing popping. We're going to get it popping before 2022. So you got about two weeks to schedule it. No, you don't have two weeks to schedule it. You have today to schedule it. And you have about two weeks, you know, to get right, of course, with my help. So now on to today's video, why all 20-somethings need a Roth IRA. So before I even get into all of the nitty gritty details, I'm going to tell y'all a little bit about how I even discovered what a Roth IRA was. So if you listen to the very first episode, Becoming the Responsible Homegirl, I had an interaction with this couple that I met in Charleston, and they told me to read this book called The Automatic Millionaire. And in reading that book, that was my first time when I had ever heard of a Roth IRA. So immediately when I was reading, reading, reading it, I'm like, mm, I definitely need to get me one of these. I had just got my refund check that January of 2022. And I was actually looking at my statements on my Roth IRA like a couple of days ago. And I opened my Roth IRA in March of 2020, March of 2020, yeah. And I opened that Roth with $1,000 that came from my last college refund check. Thank God I did something positive with it. <laughs> But it was only because I struggled the semester before. But that is how I got introduced to a Roth IRA. So if you don't know what a Roth IRA is, basically IRA stands for Individual Retirement Account. So I'm pretty sure you've heard of something like a 401k or 403b or a TSP if you're a government employee. And basically, those accounts are accounts that your employer provides for you so that you can start putting money away for retirement. But a Roth IRA is an account that you own 
that you have that you're responsible for and you are like i said putting money away for retirement so the way that you open up a roth ira is basically through any brokerage me personally i have mine through fidelity and like i said i took a thousand dollars i put it in that account and then after you put the money in that account now you need to tell your money where you want it to go sounds familiar so just like budgeting you tell your money where you want to go i don't want people to make the same mistakes that i made when i first opened my roth i literally had my roth just i'm, I'm i literally had my money sitting in my roth like just chilling that's it like i didn't know that i had to actually invest the money that i had to pick stocks that i had to pick um etfs or just anything like that like the money was literally sitting in what they would call a money market account so a money market account is no different it's very similar to a savings account so your money is just sitting there chilling and you get a small itty bitty interest rate and then something came across i don't know if i read something some article or i'm always reading something y'all so something came to me and i was like oh shoot i'm not investing the money that's in my roth ira so from there, I had to go back to Fidelity and actually pick what I wanted to invest um, my money in. But we're going to get into all of that stuff later. So now let me tell you why every 20-something should have a Roth IRA. For one, the cost of living right now is super duper expensive, period. And I don't foresee it going down at all. So the best time to start preparing for retirement is like yesterday. The younger you start preparing and putting money away from retirement, the absolute better. The reason why is because when you turn whatever age it is that you desire to retire, you do not want to be working because you have to work. You want to be working because you want to work, period. So... Putting money away now in your 20s is going to prepare you for that luxury. The luxury, the ease, the freedom, the say-so. There are plenty of people who are still working in their late 60s, their 70s, like older ages. And it's not because they want to, it's because they have to. So if you start preparing right now while you're in your 20s, the best thing that is working for you right now is time period. When it comes to building wealth, literally time is the best thing that you can have on your side. It doesn't matter if you start with $100, $500, 1000 10000 It really doesn't matter. Like you're starting somewhere and then compound interest is your best friend. So Key, what are you talking about compound interest? Y'all remember that song, Racks on Racks on Racks? Think about that when you think about compound interest. Interest on interest on interest on interest. So essentially, let's say I start off or I did start my Roth IRA with $1,000. And if I don't contribute another dime to it, right down when I checked on my Roth IRA, my year-to-date return was 21%. But for the sake of math, let's just do 20%. 1,000 times 20% is $200. So I'm going to add that 200 to 1,000 and that gives me $1,200. Now, next year... I'm not just going to earn interest on $1,000. I'm earning interest on $1,200. That $1,200 is growing more and more and more. Racks on racks on racks. Little money makes little money. But big money makes big money. So I say that to say compound interest is going to help your balance grow. And as the stock market does well, your investment is going to do well. Don't go into 2022 saying shoulda, coulda, woulda. If you know for a fact that you want to do something different with your finances, that 2021 is your last year being financially irresponsible and financially immature, book your one-on-one -on -one budgeting session with me today. I want you to think about your financial situation like a financial house. If you do not have a solid financial foundation, literally everything that you build on top of it is bound to crumble. I don't care how much money you make, how much money you invest, what businesses you start, it doesn't matter. If you don't know how to manage your money, your money will surely manage you. And sometimes all you need is somebody to walk with you hand in hand and hold you accountable and be on your neck. <laughs> and I will definitely do that. So schedule your one-on-one -on -one budgeting session so we can go through everything that you have coming in, leaving out, 
and allocate and actually give your money direction so that you can do everything that you want to do. Of course, it's not going to be easy. And yes, it will take some sacrifice, but I'll be there with you to walk you through everything step by step. Now, let's get back to the episode. So compound interest is your best friend. Let's say I start this when I'm 20 and I want to retire when I'm 60. I literally have 40 years for my money to grow, my money to season, my money to take ups and downs, and I'll still be good to retire at 60. But let's just say I start preparing for retirement when I'm 40 and I want to retire when I'm 60. Now I only have 20 years. Who do y'all think is going to have more money save for retirement the person who started at 20 and now have 40 years for their money to grow or the person that started at 40 and they only have 20 years to grow now 40 and 20 years that's a lot of time but still 40 is bigger than 20. i can literally take breaks from if i want to contribute to my investment account and my money is still going to grow so if you are a 20 something and you're listening to this podcast right now definitely consider opening a Roth IRA, starting with what you can and just contributing as much as you can on a regular basis. So like I said earlier, the earlier you start preparing for retirement, the better. Um, There's been a quote that has been going around that says you can't save your way to wealth. And I agree that you can't save your way to wealth. Saving is definitely important, but... It's just not going to multiply your money in the way that investing would. So I'm going to say that again. Saving is important, but saving is not going to multiply your money in the way that investing would. So one concept that I want you all to be familiar with is the rule of 72. So the rule of 72 basically shows you how long it's going to take you to double your money based off of your interest rate. So let's just say I had... $1,000 $1,000 in a high yield savings account because I like those savings accounts better than traditional savings account. Let's say I have $1,000 in a HYSA and the interest rate is 1%. So the rule of 72 says divide 72 by the interest rate, which is one, and that's going to tell you how long it takes to double your money. So literally 72 divided by one is what? 72. So it will literally take me 72 years for that 1,000 to turn into 2,000. 72 years, y'all. 72. So when I hear the phrase, oh, you can't save your way to wealth, that's what I think about. Although saving is very important, you can't save your way to wealth because it just, it's going to take way too long. Now, let's think about a retirement account. So like I told y'all earlier, my year-to-date return is 21%. But for the sake of math, we're going to say 20%. Now, if we divide 72, and I got my laptop right here, so I mean, I I can't do that math in my head. (laughs) If we divide 72, I actually could have did that math in my head. 72 divided by 20, because that's the interest rate, it's going to take 3.6 years for me to double my money. So do you see the difference between saving and investing, saving your way to wealth versus investing your way to wealth? Remember, it's going to take me 72 years to double that $1,000 with a 1% interest rate. But with a 20% interest rate, it's going to take me 3.6 years for my $1,000 to be $2,000 based on the rule of 72. Now, when you are investing, nobody can guarantee you an interest rate return because think about 2020, specifically March 2020. Nobody knew what was going on. People were really panicking. The stock market took a huge dip. But if you would have stayed in the market, August of 2020, the stock market was back up. The stock market was back up and booming booming so when you're investing there is always some level of risk associated with investing nobody can't guarantee you anything but still i feel like the risk is way greater than um you know trying to save your way to wealth like it just doesn't make sense make today your last day saying that you have money issues you don't have money issues you have management issues 
This is exactly why I created my ebook called Lifestyle Budgeting. Lifestyle Budgeting is the perfect, perfect resource for anyone who is tired of living paycheck to paycheck, tired of missing out on trips and going out to eat and doing different things that you love to do because the money isn't there. If you're tired of your savings account looking super duper sad, you don't have any discipline, you need the Lifestyle Budgeting ebook, okay? So make sure you click the link below in the description box to purchase your copy. Also, use the discount code, execute. Use that discount code, you get 10% off. Make sure you purchase the ebook and let's get back to the episode. Since you want to open up a Roth, I do want you to be familiar with a few rules that they have. I don't know why I did this, but because they are rules, but <laughs> um, a few rules that I want you to be familiar with. So a Roth IRA stands for Individual Retirement Account. So the goal of this account is for you to put money away for retirement. So typically, you cannot take money out of this account freely before 59 and a half without getting penalized. But with a Roth IRA, you can take money out of what you actually contributed without getting penalized. So let me explain further. Remember the example I said, if I put in a thousand and then I earn 20%, that's $200. I could take out the $1,000 with no issues, with no penalty. But say for instance, I wanted to take out $1,100. If I want to take out $1,100, now they are going to tax me 10% because Kiani is 23 years old. She's not 59 and a half. So you cannot start taking out your contributions and your growth until you turn 59 and a half. But if you want to take out just your contributions, basically meaning just everything that you put into the account, you can take it out with no penalty, no problem. But like I said, remember the goal of the Roth IRA is to save for retirement. I'm saving for the 60-year-old Kiani, the 70-year-old Kiani. I'm not saving for the 25-year-old Kiani that want to go out on a trip. That's not what we're doing. So the second rule is the income bracket or the income limit, better word, income limit. So to open a Roth IRA and to actively contribute to it, you must be earning under $139,000 as a single person. If it is a couple, you can earn $206,000. But after you have reached that threshold, you are no longer able to participate in having a Roth IRA. You just can't. Why? Your girl don't know. I really don't know. But um, you just can't. You have to tap into the other benefits like a traditional IRA or a different type of retirement account, but you can no longer use a Roth IRA. Oh, one last thing that I forgot to mention um, about having a Roth IRA is the tax benefit. So because you are investing money and putting money into this Roth that you have already paid taxes for, now when you have turned 60 years old and you want to take money out, guess who don't have to pay taxes? you you will not have to pay taxes because this is an account like i said with money in it that you have already paid taxes on this is a tax free investment account so once you start pulling money out nope you do not have to pay taxes because you have already paid taxes on the money and the beauty in that is we don't know what taxes are going to look like i'm going to say 40 years from now when I turn 63, I don't know what our tax tax bracket is going to look like, what our taxes are going to look like, but I'm pretty sure like my ancestors, they didn't pay the taxes that we're paying today. So I can only assume that our taxes are going to continue to rise, especially with inflation, the cost of living, all of that good stuff. So why not have a financial vehicle, aka a Roth IRA, where you can store tax-free money into for as long as you're making under $139,000 you can invest in this account and yes you have limits you can only invest $6,000 a year but still this is a great way to take advantage of this a great way to take advantage of it now on to taking action and how to actually open up a Roth IRA like I told y'all earlier there are plenty of places where you can open up a Roth. You can probably even open up one with your bank. I chose Fidelity because 
one is very user friendly and when i went on the website they had plenty of educational resources mind y'all i opened this bra when i was like in the beginning stages of understanding money i really did not know a thing so the fact that i went on their website and i saw plenty of articles educational things basically where i could learn i was like okay yeah this is the one but just because i have my roth at fidelity you don't have to have your roth there you can literally get a roth anywhere i would say the most important thing um though is to really determine if you are going to manage it or if you want somebody else to manage it now i manage my own roth because i'm interested in this type of stuff i don't mind reading books and learning more and honestly when it comes to investing my money into different companies i don't think hard about it like i don't look at charts i i just don't do that stuff I was watching a video one time and this man said when he's investing in the stock market, he think about three things. One, do he use the company? Two, does he love the company? And three, will the company be around for 10 plus years? And that is the same method that I have adopted. Like it just makes it so much easier. Y'all have to stop thinking about like investing in the stock market as like this gambling thing, especially when it comes to investing for retirement, because it's not gambling at all. You are playing a long-term wealth game, period. So with an example of that, like I am invested in Apple and I'm invested in T-Mobile. Those are just two examples of companies that I'm invested in. Why? Because I use both of them. I have a iPhone, a MacBook. My service provider is T-Mobile. Second thing, do I love them? Yeah, they're okay. I mean, I do love them. <laughs> T-Mobile, I love how they give back to the community. I love how they give back to their customers. Um, in King Street, their service isn't the best, but I mean, it's okay. You get what you pay for. They're affordable. Um, Mac, I love Mac. I love Apple. I love my iPhone products, my Apple products, like everything. I love them. And three, will they be around 10 plus years? I imagine so because they have been around 10 plus years already, 10 years already. So that's just a method that I use. Um, but when you are opening up this Roth IRA, that is something that I want you to think about. Will I manage this myself or will I let somebody else manage it? It can be an opportunity for you to learn. Um, both opportunities, both, wh whichever way that you decide to let it be ran and let it be managed, it can be a learning opportunity because if you do plan to work with a financial advisor, they need to be able to educate you and pour into you and know exactly what it is that you're invested in. Whether you care about it or not, it's still good to know. This episode was sponsored by Mainvest. Mainvest, oh my gosh, y'all. It is an app that I am completely in love with. And the reason why is because it allows you to invest in small businesses. Or should we say scaling businesses? Because I don't really like the idea of small because we're not putting nothing little nothing small anything like that in front of nothing that we're doing but you get the clue businesses that are not as big as an apple or as big as a uh, google or amazon yes you get to actually invest in these businesses the thing is though when you invest in these businesses you don't actually get equity in the business it's almost like a loan to the business so you'll get your money back plus interest and you get to decide what small businesses that you actually want to invest in. So it is a great way to put your money in a place where you know for a fact you're going to get your money back plus interest. So please, if you are interested in making a difference within our local business community, make sure you check out Mainvest. All in all, prepare for retirement right now. The younger you are, the better. Because it's not about the money that you're invested, but it's about the habit, the years, the consistency. Because you may start off an account with $1,000 or even $500. And then two years from now, you'll be looking at that account like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's $2,200 in there. $2,200. Because I have consistently invested $20 here, $100 here, $200 there. And I have chose investments like it can literally blow your mind, literally blow your mind. So I didn't touch on the difference between stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, all of that good stuff. I didn't touch on that in this video because 
I wanted it to be specifically about a Roth IRA and everything that you hear on the Responsible Homegirl podcast. I want you to take it as seeds, not as me telling you what to do because I'm not even licensed to give investment advice. I want you to take it as seeds, seeds planted. So I want to encourage you, do more research, ask more questions, but all in all, take action. And I'm not telling y'all nothing that I don't have myself or I haven't implemented myself and that successful and wealthy people haven't had themselves. I know for a fact, the couple that I met in Charleston, they didn't tell me to read The Automatic Millionaire for no reason. We didn't talk about opening up retirement account when I was 21 years old for no reason. Because it's not about what you have right now. You can't look at what you currently see. You have to be looking beyond that. You have to be believing and thinking about what you can't see. Faith. Period. So if you didn't get anything else from this video, I hope that you got the earlier you start preparing for retirement, the better. And that a Roth IRA is only one avenue that you can start preparing start preparing for retirement. I am sharing my story and sharing helpful things that I have read and experienced to help you make responsible financial decisions and become wealth conscious. Period. That's it and that's all. That's it and that's all. So share this video with your homegirls because they need to know this stuff too. We are not leveling up alone over here. If you thought that this video was helpful, you learned something new, share it. Even if you think they may know, still share it. Because when you start making boss moves, I don't want nobody in your circle to be able to say, oh, she ain't tell me this. She ain't tell me that. She keeping that information to herself. Mm -mm, that's not you. So make sure you share this podcast with other people. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts, please make sure you rate and review the podcast so more people can find the Responsible Home Girl and get introduced to this great content. I appreciate you all so much for watching, so much for listening in. And always remember, with exposure, execution, and consistency, there is nothing you can't do. I'll see y'all next time.